Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. Uh, I am currently showing this presentation which I have, which I compiled it uh, not very long ago, I would say. Okay. Okay. So this is this is mostly the first lesson which I have just shown you from the topic point of view. So uh, let's start with uh, uh, let's start with uh, trying to understand uh, your uh, idea about what data science is. Okay. So uh, you could all you could you could always go to the site whenever you need. But let's try to have a conversation instead of just me trying to speak and uh, you just uh, listen. Okay. So. When you say data science, uh, well, what exactly do you have in mind, or, or what is the first thought which comes to your mind when you say it's it's data science? Could you could you give me any idea of that? Uh, when I think of data science, I, I think of uh, combining um, qual qualitative methods, quantitative methods with extracting data from. Um, healthcare systems or life science systems and applying it in that kind of field from what I've gone yeah. through school and done projects on and professors lecturing me. Hmm. Oh, okay. Oh. okay. And uh, when you say uh, uh, kind of projects, so what kind of work is usually done in data science? Do you have some idea about that? Yes, uh, some day-to-day -day work which you feel is done, or you might have done. Uh, I know data science, I think, is used in, in the genetic side, hmm. um, if I'm right. Hmm. Yes. Understanding of it, not a deep understanding. Hmm. Um, but I, data science also is used in public health. Hmm. Hmm. When they build models and stuff. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So uh, when I speak about data science, there are two basic aspects to that which you need to keep in mind. Okay. It is uh, as much as it is science, as much it is arts as well. Okay. So if I say it is a combination of certain uh, scientific methods. Okay. So there are two aspects to that. There is something called as the technical skills which you would require, okay? And there is something called as the soft skills which you would also require, okay? Now, why do I say these things are important? Because when you are working on any data science related work, uh, let's say it could be in your field, it could be uh, related to a different field as well. There are certain insights which you are trying to extract, okay? And you are trying to extract those insights from certain sources of data, okay? Now, when I say sources of data, it could be structured data, it could be semi-structured data, or it could be unstructured data as well, okay? Uh, can you give me some example of, uh, let's say, unstructured data? Do you have any idea? Do you have anything in mind when I speak about unstructured data? Uh... If I can make a guess, something uh, something that's pulled at random, I'm not too sure. Okay, so <clears throat> let me give you an let me give you an example of a structured data. So when I say structured data, the very easiest example which you could think of is an Excel file. Okay. In Excel file, we, in, in, in an Excel file, you have your rows and columns in which you'll be putting your data. So you know in which structure your data has to be entered, right? So that is an example of a structured data. Another example could be, let's say you have opened a notepad in your laptop or in your computer and you have scribbled out something. So whatever things you are going to scribble out in that notepad, it has to be in a particular format, okay? You cannot, let's say, write it down on a horizontal way, or you cannot write it on a vertical way, or, or you cannot write it on a diagonal way, okay? There has to be certain structure to that particular data. Now, contrary to that, okay, there are certain other data, data, data points as well, which we call it as an unstructured data, okay? 
So a pretty good example of an unstructured data would be an image. So if you if you think of an image, okay, and uh, normally uh, like uh, normally people think of image as a combination of certain colors, right? But yeah. you might be aware that behind those colors there are certain pixels, okay, which actually contribute to that colors. If you see a particular say block in a particular image to be red. So in that particular point or in that particular say uh, area the what you call it as the uh, frequency of red pixel is very high. That's the reason you are seeing red as the color. Okay. So whenever you see image okay on at the back of it you can imagine that image to be a very huge matrix okay i'm not calling this as an array array should have been the correct term but i'm just uh, calling that as a matrix just to simplify the things okay i i hope you have some idea about what matrix is right it's a combination yeah. of columns so just imagine that particular image to be a combination of certain rows and columns with range of 0 to 255. If everything is 0, it's a grayscale image. That means it's a black and white image. Okay. If there are certain pixels, let's say if there is a high concentration of, let's say, a blue pixel, then your image will have a blue tone to that. Okay. So image is a kind of unstructured data. There are a lot of unstructured data which has, let's say, uh, come out of late. Okay. So the data points which have come out in the last 10 years is, is said to be equal to what has come out in the previous 90 years. Okay. That's how, uh, the, that's the proportion of uh, the data which has actually burst out. Okay. Now, when you are having a lot of data, okay, one, one pretty good example of a data point could be if you are going to any particular supermarket on a weekday for making your uh, purchases, for making your uh, grocery purchases, you would actually be making a transaction. Okay, so when you make a particular transaction, you are actually also leaving your imprint, your behavior of how you shop. Okay, now these uh, data points are actually very important to the retailers. Okay, and when these data points, uh, and then when they have actually accumulated a lot of such data points, it becomes very useful for them if they could somehow monetize those data points. So when I say monetize those data points, they can make some, uh, like they can generate some insights out of that and they can use those end slides to, let's say, generate additional revenues. Hence, data leading to money or data leading to revenue, we call that as monetizing data. Okay, that's a particular term which you might be hearing very often. Okay, now, so I have given you some examples. So, the text data which you are writing when you are composing an email would be a form of unstructured data. Okay. The way that I'm speaking right now, which is getting recorded, let's say over a period of time you'll go through this recording, is an unstructured data. Okay, I can convert this particular audio to a particular text data. How do I do that? You must be aware that there are a lot of cloud vendors. Okay, coming to this particular point. When I speak about data science, uh, can you uh, help me understand what are the different tools and platforms and any other things which is available using which we can carry out data science based work okay see uh, try to understand one thing whatever things i'm trying to ask you it's it's actually not a kind of interrogation just uh, just just uh, have an idea that this is a kind of discussion which we are having and yeah. there is no right and there is no wrong answer to that okay whatever you say is is okay for me okay so can you I help me understand? Yeah, tell me. I just have one question on the unstructured data. So if an yeah. image is one color, um, would it still be unstructured? Yeah, sorry, tell me. If 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 if, 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 if an image is if an image is one color, so only one kind of 
pixel, a red pixel with the whole image? Hmm. Hmm. Still be unstructured data? Yeah, it would still be because number of pixel does not determine whether your data is structured or not. It is the way that that particular data is organized is what determines the structure of the data. Okay, let's do it. Let's have a proper look at an unstructured data, the definition of an unstructured data. Uh, just hold on. So I have uh, unstructured data and what do you have definition? Okay. Let's see what we have over here. See, uh, one thing you might like to understand is when we are defining an unstructured data, it is with respect to a structured data. Now, when I speak about structured data, this is mostly the relational databases. So when I say relational databases, any particular database which is stored in kind of a table which has rows and columns. So anything which deviates from how you can store a particular data in a row and a column tends towards being unstructured. It could be semi-structured or it could be totally unstructured, depending on the nature of uh, unstructured that data that particular follows. Okay, so what we have is unstructured data is information in many different forms that does not follow follow conventional data models. Okay, making it difficult to store, manage, and ma making it difficult to store and manage. Okay. Okay. And. Uh, Okay, see, just one more thing. Unstructured data has an internal structure but does not contain predetermined data model or schema. It does not actually have a schema to that. That's what determines whether your data is structured and structured or unstructured. This is exactly the right word which I was looking for, schema. If I speak about any relational database, it will have something which we call it as a schema. Okay? okay. So uh, if you are aware about databases, there is something called as uh, relationship diagram as well, which establishes the relationship, okay, which is basically the schema or a kind of uh, the, or what you can call it as uh, the skeleton of how that particular data is prepared, okay. So that's how uh, the definition differs from structure to unstructured, okay. You might have to understand how that particular a data point was built to determine whether it was in structured data or an unstructured data. Okay, so I'm I'm uploading a video in Facebook. Okay, that forms a part of an unstructured data because a uh, video is a combination of a certain image at a very high uh, frequency. I would say. Okay, that's how mm -hmm. things are determined over here. Okay, uh, coming to your field. Uh, what usually is a source of data for you? So when you say uh, genetics, uh, would it be right to say that you are currently working in genetics or, or what exactly is your field? Uh, genomics is what they call okay. it. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. So if I have to understand about uh, genomics, so what usually is a data source in genomics? Do you have any idea about that? Uh, Illumina is a data source. It's actually a company, but they're the prominent one that has a lot of data for next generation sequencing, which is an important part of genomics that mm -hmm. they published um, uh, for open source. Okay, okay. And uh, whatever data they have, uh, this organization has uh, has has uh, has has published. So, do you know where exactly this data came from? Uh, this data came from um, the, so it came from the next generation sequencing that they do in their labs. They have people that run the physical test in the lab and then they have, which they call the wet data, which mm -hmm. is the physical lab test that they do and the dry data is the um, results they get out of it, where they have people that ex extract Mm -hmm. but the test. Okay. Okay. See, uh, I, I do not have much of an idea of genomics. Maybe over some period of time I will have it when I hear from you and I'll also try to go through some of the things in genomics. But 
what I'm trying to understand is, so when you say there are some dry tests and wet tests, but what exactly constitutes this data? So these are certain gene sequence, right? So when you say genomics, if you understand it correctly, these are certain gene sequence which they, upon which they are running certain experiments, right? Yeah. So they, the they, 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 yeah, tell me. that they get is, hmm. would be hmm. the genetic code of the variants hmm. out of yeah. Yeah, so it would yeah. be a series of letters. Yeah, exactly. So whatever they're working with is a kind of genetic code with respect to whatever we have in the gene. Okay. So let's yeah. say there is a particular, uh, say, uh, it's a, there is a particular sequence of uh, genetic code which combines to have one particular gene. So th that exactly forms a kind of data for you, right? Now, data could be as simple as, let's say, uh, understanding the demographic of a particular person. So if I have to understand to which particular region in US you belong to, to uh, which particular age group you belong to, to which particular, say, uh, family group you belong to, that could also be a kind of data, okay? We will also come to the kind of data that you are, you are working with, okay? But before that, I think I might have to get some understanding of what is a typical uh, data set in in in, uh, in 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 genomics, okay. Or for that matter, if you have any of those publicly available data set, you can share uh, the link with me so that I can go through. I can understand what kind of data they have, so that we can uh, let's say direct our conversation conversation mostly towards uh, uh, the genomics data in in which you are mostly comfortable with. Okay, that will help you and that will help this discussion as well. Okay. I'll um I'll get oh. that information together. Yeah. Uh, by tomorrow, and then I can send it to you. Yes, yes. Any time it's fine. Yeah. Take your time. Not an issue over there. Okay. okay. So compiling all these thoughts. Okay. Whatever we have discussed till now. So data science is a technical or a, it's an interdisciplinary field where we are using scientific methods to extract knowledge and insights from structured and unstructured data which ideally helps the particular organization okay it is obviously towards the benefit of a particular organization so what i'm trying to say in the very last thing is there is a particular objective so whenever you are doing data science based work there is a particular objective which you are trying to reach when you are doing that in your uh, in your uh, genomics uh, Maybe you are trying to understand uh, which particular gene sequence could lead to a better outcome. Okay, it's a very random example. You must be aware how bad I am in uh, genomics and also I'm just trying to correlate the things over here. Okay, so let's see you're looking for an outcome with respect to the genes that you're having. So you, you, you will analyze different patterns of uh, 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 gene, genomics data over there and you will try to come up with some kind of insights as well. Okay, there could also be a possibility that you are applying statistical techniques, okay, to understand what kind of work or like what kind of data could lead to a better event. Okay, that could also be a scenario over here. Okay, coming to a particular field in which I am more comfortable with. Okay, so to give you a very good example of data science, let's say I have a particular patient. Okay, I have a historical data of a particular set of patients who are diabetic and non-diabetic, okay? So using that particular data set, using that historical data set, which will be a combination of, uh, say, uh, personal information and medical information as well, leading to uh, me or leading to everyone knowing whether a particular person is diabetic or not, we can actually derive a lot of insights from such data sets. And at the same point in time, we can also build certain predictive model using that data set with the help of which we can actually predict whether a particular person could be diabetic or not. Okay, so let's say I have a sample of a million observation. I build a model using that particular data set. And, 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 and at the end of that exercise, I have a best model with me with the help of which I can confidently tell you that you can give me any kind of, you can give me any kind of, uh, say, personal and health-related data for a particular patient, 
and I can tell you what are the chances that that particular person would be diabetic or not. Okay, so this is exactly a kind of prediction which we are doing. Now, the techniques that we are using for doing this prediction could be based on, uh, let's say, uh, say uh, intermediate statistics to, let's say, advanced statistics as well. You remember one thing, these are all statistical techniques. So whenever we are building any kind of predictive model, there is a statistical concepts behind that. Okay, so it, it becomes very important that you understand at least some part of statistics. Okay, and if you are, uh, I would say if you are an expert or, or if you are even an intermediary in, a, a, in statistics, that would be really very good. Okay, now data science is, is, is a particular field in which you will apply knowledge and actionable insights from data across broad range of application domains. It is interdisciplinary. Okay, by now you must have got some idea. You are using data science in genomics. We are using data science in uh, banking industry. We are using data science in insurance. We are using this in marketing, social media, automobile. You have to just name a field and you will find some applications or other of data science in that particular field. Okay, now a small task for you. Okay, it may not be very much related, but still I'll, I'll try to uh, make sure that you can actually relate to them. Uh, I want you to find out, let's say, some applications of data science in the field of healthcare and in the field of pharmacy. Okay, these may not be very related to the work that you're doing. I'm not very sure about that but this could be closely related, okay? So I, 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 I hope the task is clear, okay? It's, it's, something that will be, it's something that will benefit you, okay? So over yeah. a period of time, the objective is to uh, have a good awareness about where data science is used in the fields in which you're working on. You probably must be knowing how data science is used in genomics, okay? If not, you can also add genomics to your list, okay? So okay. what I want, to find out is try to find out certain applications in the in the area of healthcare or in the area and sorry not or and in the area of pharmacy oh, it will be pharmacy uh, healthcare yeah uh, yeah that could also be yeah healthcare could be one of them and uh, you you have your retail pharmacy stores in US right yeah and there are really a lot. And, and and if you if you dig a bit deeper, you will find that they are also using a lot of data science. Okay, I, I, I know some of this because I have worked with some of those clients. That's the reason I'm also asking you to uh, dig something on that. And also the third thing is genomics. So okay. health, pharmacy, and genomics. Uh, try to find out what are the uh, applications or, or how data science is being used and which is ultimately benefiting the customers and also the organization, okay? This is something that you might like to find. You will, you will actually find out a lot of interesting things as well, okay? By the way, I'm not asking you to find anything technical on that, okay? So I'll give you an example. So let's say in the area of banking, okay, which is very much non-related, I would say. Now, there are a lot of people who are going to bank just to check whether they can apply a loan or not. Okay, now let's say I am a, a multinational bank which is situated in your region and I have developed a particular application with the help of which customers need not go to a bank physically. They can sit at their home, they can download my application, they can input certain details which I might need or, or that particular application might need to run and check whether they are eligible for loan or not. If yes, how much they are eligible for. So there are two things which this particular application is addressing, okay? One important thing, okay, I'll, I'll tell you what the two things are, but before that, one important thing when you are working in the field of data science is trying to identify the problem statement. It is very, very crucial, even though these are just two terms. And when you are trying to identify the problem statement, initially you may struggle to understand how you can find out the problem statement. Over a period of time, you might understand how you can find out 
how you can try and find out the problem statement but you might have to ask a lot of questions for that for which you might hesitate over a period of time you will be very confident what could be a problem statement depending on which you'll be having precise query so this is a typical uh, uh, I would say a typical learning curve which follows when you are trying to understand what is a problem statement okay now I'll give you a particular state I'll give you a particular statement which I have just made I, what I'll do is I'll, I'll try to uh, see whether you are able to grab the problem statement or not, or the objective or not, okay? So what I have said is, I'm an MNC bank uh, based out of the region where you are situated right now, okay? And uh, I, I, I specialize in, in giving loans, let's say retail loans, okay? Now, uh, as a bank, uh, I, I want to... Uh, let's say make it convenient for my customers uh, so that they do not have to visit my bank physically to understand whether they could get a loan or not and in case they are eligible for a loan how much of whom they are eligible for so if this is a particular a problem statement which will actually be in, in, in real life scenario you won't be getting such a long problem statement okay so the problem statement would be something like that I want to uh, uh, I want to ensure that uh, I, I want to ensure that uh, the, the customer the customers who are seeking loan I want to ensure that their experience is far better than what they what it is currently okay that could be a problem statement after which you have to dig in okay but I'm just I'm just simplifying the problem statement over here and I'm saying that uh, I want to uh, let's say just hold on let me just think through it yeah I want to make sure that my customers are able to find out whether they are eligible for loan or not okay just by sitting at their home okay without visiting the bank physically so what are the what are the main things that I am trying to address in this particular statement would you would you be able to help me with that or do you want me to repeat in the phone Oh, I was going to say one one thing you're trying to address is the eligibility factor, whether they are, they are eligible or not for the loan. And okay. the other is um, convenience for them, where they can do it at home, online, instead of coming into the space physically. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Let, let, let me tell you one thing. Okay, that, that is correct, actually, by the way. But, uh, okay, let me give you another problem statement which may not be as explicit as this one okay so let me just think through it mm -hmm. okay well uh, I want to make sure okay that my customers again a banking client okay I want to make sure uh, that most I, I want to make sure that the retail customers which I have they are not uh, okay, they're not getting robbed out of their money while they are making transactions. Okay, so this is a particular problem statement which I have. Okay, or of late I have seen, or of late the bank has been witnessing a lot of uh, say customers being uh, dumped of their money, their hard-earned money, and I want to stop that. So. What do you make out of that? So one thing is that you're trying to stop your customers from losing their money. Mm -hmm. So you need to find a way uh, to fix that problem mm -hmm. at your stores. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know if this is right, but um, since customers are losing money, they would mm -hmm. be less inclined to come to your stores. So mm -hmm. to we build that relationship with the customer and trust mm -hmm. to get your customers back and keep your clientele. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you are assigned this particular task and if you have to address this particular problem, what could be the next logical question that you would like to put back to that particular uh, organization? Do you have anything in mind? 
Um, did you did, did you did you understand what I'm trying to ask? I can repeat. Yeah, can you repeat? Yeah. So if you are assigned this particular task, okay, this problem statement which we have just discussed, let's say you consider yourself to be a data scientist. Okay. So let's say they are assigning you this particular task. Okay. So you you are interested and you 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 they want you to help them with this particular problem which they are facing. So my question to you is what is the next logical question which you would ask back to them? Why why are your customers getting robbed? Yeah. Anything else? How are they getting robbed? Like how are they losing their money? Exactly. When they come to close? Only if you are addressing the how and the why part of it, you will get to know what is happening. Okay. See, the first statement that we had made was very much implicit. Okay. You just knew that the customers are somehow getting, let's say, duped. They are either getting duped online or maybe at the physical sources. You are not sure about that. So once you get to know about that business problem, you have to dig in deep. Okay, you have to ask what is actually happening, which is leading to, let's say, which is leading to the customers facing such issues. Okay, so they might tell you that uh, while they are making some online transactions. There are certain fraudulent sites which are coming up on which they are making those payments unintentionally. Okay, and after that, they let's say, and after that, let's say the bank account or the credit card which was lent was was let's say uh, that there were well there were a lot of uh, uh, fraudulent transactions which were happening. So what essentially means that there are certain fraudulent activities which were happening. Okay. So whenever a particular customer was trying to make some kind of payment on that particular site, there were a lot of fraudulent activities which was happening because of which this customers were losing a lot of money. So ultimately, what the bank wants to do is, or what that organization wants to do is, they want to stop or they want to minimize or they want to prevent this uh, fraudulent transactions which were happening. Okay, now. If you are, if you want to prevent a fraudulent transactions, you need to understand how many such fraudulent transactions has happened in the past, okay? And how many non-fraudulent transactions has happened in the past? Why would you need? Why would you need that? Because if you have to build a model to predict a fraudulent transaction, you'd also need to distinguish that with a non-fraudulent transaction. Okay, so I can call a particular transaction fraudulent or non-fraudulent on a particular base. There has to be a particular base which I will consider base on which I can call that. Okay, so yeah, that, that's a particular different story which you can discuss. But the point that we understood with after this discussion is how to elicit response from a particular client when you are trying to understand the problem statement. Okay, 99% of the time, the problem statement which your customers would be providing it to you will not even be 1% clear. But that is pretty much but that is pretty much expected. You have to have, you you have to understand how you can probe your customers. Okay, you have to understand how you can elicit response from your customers. Okay, it's very important that you. Uh, uh, get into that groove because it is not that the customer is unwilling to share this information It is just that they do not know how to share that information or uh, or, or, or like uh, What part of that information needs to be shared? Okay, so just just give me a moment Okay, I'm back. 
So, uh, data science continues to, it's, it's one of the most promising and in, the, uh, in demand career path for skilled professionals, okay. It has been in vogue for the past, I would say, five to eight years. It has matured quite a lot to what it was, uh, let's say, five years ago, okay. So, this is uh, some information about data science. About data scientist, we, we have tried to understand uh, through our discussion what a data scientist usually do. Okay, There are certain skills which you as a data scientist might need to have. Okay, So, those skills could be, let's say, see, effective data scientists are able to identify relevant questions. Okay identifying relevant questions and let's say eliciting response for those uh, questions is very important for you okay if you are not able to identify the relevant questions you will miss out on things okay and it is not the responsibility of the organization or the customers to tell you everything but on the other hand or like on the contrary it is you as a data scientist who will have to ensure that you have all the information okay so you would need to have strong quantitative background, okay, preferably in statistics and linear algebra with a programming knowledge as well, okay. And if required, you might also need to have basic ETL skills as well, okay. So ideally what happens is there is a particular data lake, okay, there is, a, okay, let's not use those terms, there is a particular uh, it's a kind of a database which which the customer has okay and okay, let me see if I can draw something here okay so uh, hmm. Okay, let's say this is the database which the customer has, okay. Not very good to hear, but yeah. Let's say this is the database for my customer and uh, let's say this is uh, you who is the data scientist working here, okay. And uh, so what you would be, what you would end up doing is, more often than not you will end up connecting with this database, okay. You will have to connect with this database and you would be fetching data okay so that see you, you need to understand one thing whatever you're doing in data science the basis data whether it's structured or unstructured okay and with respect to that there has to be a kind of database okay it could be a traditional database it could be a hadoop based database it could be spark based database as well okay it totally depends uh, what is the nature of data depending on which you'll, you'll get to know more about this particular database which this organization has okay once well, you get yeah how do you define a database a database could be any particular uh, any any particular framework any particular say okay any particular framework in which you would be storing your data okay to give you a very good example okay so if i have to consider facebook okay just just imagine the amount of just uh, we'll just consider one aspect okay just imagine the amount of images which have been uploaded to Facebook in one day, okay? And let's say I am Facebook and I want to store all this data. So there will be a kind of repository where I would like to store all this data. Is, is, is that clear till here? So this yeah. is my object, okay? So whatever infrastructure I would be building so that I can store let's say on an average I can store let's say 10 million images per day okay I have an infrastructure which I have built I know that infrastructure is capable of handling 1 million images per day okay so that particular infrastructure where my images would be uh, 
stored. Okay, so the moment a particular user uploads an image, uh, that particular image gets stored to my database so that whenever that particular person uh, feels like retrieving that image, so whenever you as a user logs to your Facebook profile and you want to download that image, so what you will be doing is you will be essentially making a call to that database and the database will ensure that whatever image you are trying to download is ready for you. Okay, so from Facebook point of view, whatever infrastructure they would be building to store that particular image would be considered as a database. Okay, there is something, uh, they, there are a lot of technicalities to that. It is, it is not as simple as I have explained over here because uh, there is one thing called a streaming of data. Okay, so when I say streaming of data, it is mostly the flow of data. If, if you are, let's say, uh, let, let's try, let's just try to scale it up. Let's say, uh, for the, uh, let's say, uh, instead of 1 million data, okay, per day, over next five years, Facebook is handling 100 million images per day, okay? So okay. in that case, it is high velocity of data, it's high volume of data. So when I say high velocity, it means users are frequently uploading their images, okay, because user base is growing and it is an unstructured form of data. So there is a particular aspect which is called a streaming of data. So when I say streaming of data, so let's see that, okay, let me just widen the horizon over here. Mm -hmm. So let's say this is the Facebook application which you are Yeah, so we're trying to access this application of, of say this is Facebook. Let's see if I can write some. Okay, yeah, good. Okay, so this is Facebook application which you're trying to access. Okay, and uh, let me put another arrow over here. And another one. Hmm. For the time being, let's not use this. Okay. So you're sitting at your home. Okay, you're accessing Facebook, you're, you're uploading some images over there, okay, let's say you, you had been to some kind of party and you are uploading some images over here, okay, what Facebook does is it, it processes those images and it keeps them in their backend as well, okay, now there could be a lot of users like this, okay, there could be a number of users who are actually uh, using such, uh, like who are actually uploading images at the same point in time, okay, so it becomes very important that this particular images are streamed properly, properly through this Facebook UI and also through the backend, okay? So that's what I meant by streaming. So streaming becomes very important and if you are having a high velocity of data and in that case, it is very essential that you have a very strong engine which is capable of streaming a lot of data. It totally depends on what is the data that you are expecting based on which the streaming power needs to be decided, okay? So these are some things which are related to database. But as of now, if you want to understand what database is, just understand this as a kind of repository which you will be having, okay? Just to store any kind of information. It could be structured information, it could be unstructured information, it could be anything, okay? So that's what we have over here. Now, uh, these are some of the important skills that a data scientist uh, should ideally have, okay? Or uh, they can, let's say, uh, over a period of time 
these are some of the examples of data science in different industries i would not include anything from the uh, genomics but uh, I'll, I'll try to do that this is something which i have let's say for banking anomaly detection okay let's say fraudulent transaction you want to disburse a loan for the insurance let's say you want to do a customer profiling you want to reduce your uh, or you want to increase your compliance okay to the policies that you have you want to make sure that cross selling and upselling happens in those insurance products okay in the area of retail it could be user generated comments finding whatever feedback you are leaving behind after shopping in a particular store they want to actually monetize those particular comments okay sentiment analysis understanding the behavior of those customers segmentation customer segmentation trying to understand to which particular predefined segment you belong to so that they can actually target their products better okay in the area of automobile it could be breakdown failure you want you, you, let's say you are an automobile uh, company you, you are selling high end cars okay let's say mercedes okay and you do not want your customers to face the kind of breakdown let's say after uh, n number of years within while they are driving in a secluded area okay so you would like to uh, let's say make some kind of predictions and tell them in advance that there is a high chance that if you are actually uh, driving a car without any service or like without any servicing for let's say five years continuously the car might break down for a period of time okay so those kind of things which is really very important that you would share with your client okay um, infotainment dashboard like you must have seen that uh, if you compare any particular car now to what a car was let's say 30 years ago there is a lot of difference that you could see there are certain cars which are uh, call as smart cars as well or in which you'll you'll find inherently they're built with internet of things okay yeah i'm not sure about that if you have heard about mg vector okay mg vector uh, morrison garage okay that's a particular organization or that's a particular brand for automobiles okay and they have recently launched certain cars in india which are uh, they they are claiming those cars to be iot cars okay internet of things cars. So what happens is that you can actually track uh, your driving habits. You can actually track the tire quality or the deterioration of the tire. You can actually track your speeding habits as well. These are certain information which are collected from the car and just passed on to you, let's say with the help of a app which you have installed on your phone. It, it it tries to understand your patterns and it tries to give suggestions as well. Okay, so let's say on 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 a particular chilly night at, at 10 p.m. It, it is giving you a suggestion that you are you so you are planning to head head back home from a particular say party. Okay, so it it might give you with a suggestion that uh, going by your previous trends, I could see that if you are driving at this particular point in time at night, you usually try you usually uh, tend to drive a bit faster okay so you are advised to check uh, on your speed a bit okay that could be a particular information which is generated which could be in the form of an infotainment okay so these are certain uh, insights which uh, are actually generated from such points as well and i call this as iot this is something which is totally different so there are different uh, points there are different let's say uh, cells, uh, what you call it as uh, sensors yeah there are different sensors which are attached in your car which captures this particular information okay once this particular information is captured again these are all unstructured data once this information are captured uh, there is a particular logic which runs behind this particular thing okay and, and it tries to create certain insights out of that okay insight generation is also one of the most important things that you will uh, end up doing when you are working in the field of data science Okay. Now, uh, I, I have another task for you, okay, which is related to this particular slide which we are going to discuss. So, when I speak of data science, can you help me understand what are the different tools, different platforms, and different options which I have, with the help of which I can implement my data science work? Okay, so let's say you are a data scientist, you want to uh, generate some insights from the genome data that you have. So, what exactly is that thing in which you will start 
writing your codes okay so you might say uh, okay what ex uh, what do you usually use in your college is it is it python yes they um they stress python and r programming hmm. Hmm. so those are the okay. two main things that they stress and are going to teach okay fine so the two things which you know will be a constraint for you here when I'm asking you this question, okay? So apart from R and Python, what are the other tools, other platforms which is available for you to use if you want to do any kind of data science work, okay? You have to list out at least, say, six. If you are able to list out more than six, it's well and good. You have to search the internet a lot, okay? but you will end up getting those things, I'm pretty much sure, okay? See, the focus is not uh, just trying to limit yourself to just R and Python. Obviously, we'll be, con we'll be continuing everything on Python, but you would also need to know what are, uh, or like how it is usually being practiced in the industry, okay? That's something which will be very useful for you. So try to get a feel of what other tools, platforms, and other things which you could use if you want to feel like a doing data science work, okay, the only constraint you have is you're not going to mention R and Python. I, I hope the task is clear, right? So you, this is your second task, okay? Okay. Okay, so now let's try to understand what Python for data science helps us or how does Python help us for doing data science based work, okay? As I have mentioned, or as I have implicitly mentioned, there are different other tools as well, apart from Python, which you can actually use, one of them being R, okay? R is more of a statistical software than Python, I would say, okay? So if I just have to compare R and Python, in, in case you are uh, doing certain uh, data science-based work, there are certain advantages which R would have over Python, even though they are actually very limited, I would say, okay? There was a particular period in which R was mostly used. That was way back in 2013, 14, and 15, I would say, okay? Uh, and that was also uh, some time in which I had started. So I, I clearly remember I initially started with R as well. So when I started, there was not so much craze about Python. Now, coming back to R, uh, if I have to name a particular technique, okay, there is something called as a time series uh, analysis, okay, you may or may not have heard about that. This is mostly a kind of prediction which you are doing on a time series based data, okay. A simple prediction of time series could be, let's say you are trying to predict uh, what could be the temperature in the next few days in your region depending uh, like considering you have access to the historical 10 years of temperature data okay that could be a time series data now, would another, sorry. yeah tell me would yes, another tell me. that would be the um, the predictions that they made for covid related cases and deaths sorry i missed that first part of it uh, what were you asking about uh, predictions another, would another example be the the prediction models they use for the COVID-19 cases? That could be, that could be, but one differentiator which you need to understand is when I strictly speak about time series data, okay, your target variable, okay, there is a concept of target variable and response variable which will try to understand over a period of time, okay, but but just try to understand target variable. I, I'll, I'll give you a simple analogy over here after which we'll come to this COVID example of yours. So remember the uh, the diabetic example that I gave you during the starting of the session? So that particular variable which tells me whether the particular person is diabetic or not, consider that to be your target variable and all the other variables which is, uh, which is actually leading to this particular person being diabetic or not is your response variable. Okay, just try to understand these two terms for the time being response variable and target variable. So target variable is a variable which is telling you whether that particular person is diabetic or not. Okay, now let's try to uh, use this particular terms in your example that you have given. Now you are saying that when I'm trying to predict 
how many COVID cases are going to happen in the next uh, 10 or 15 days? Is, is, did, I, did I get that correctly? Yes. Okay. So in this case, you need to understand one thing that this particular data set, in, in this particular data set, the number of COVID cases would be your target variable. Okay. So that is your target variable. Now, if the response variable that you have is only a function of time, only and only a function of time, only then I can say that it is a time period, it's a time series data. Okay. Now, in general, COVID, uh, the span, uh, when you are trying to determine how many instances of COVID you can actually expect in the next 10 to 15 days, usually there are a lot of other factors apart from time even though time plays an important factor. So strictly speaking, we cannot say COVID data, which I have presented to you just now, is a time series data. However, if I synthetically remove all the other parameters and I just keep that time factor, okay? So my data set will look like uh, I, I, I have been monitoring COVID since uh, February 2020 and on a daily basis I have been capturing the count of COVID uh, uh, patients who are suffering from COVID. So if I have just two columns in my data, one will be the data and one will be the COVID count, that will be a time series data. Okay, Which data may not be considered as a pure time series data? I have the date column. Okay, I have the demographic of that person. Okay, I have the his I have the health related information of that person. I have that, uh, let's say financial information of that person. And I have that COVID count as well. So instead of two columns, let's say I have additional 12 columns, which is leading to the COVID count. So in that scenario, this is not a pure time series data. Okay. Okay. Is that clear? Yeah. Yeah. So these are certain specific terms okay see uh, this is just the overview session i would say all these things that i have been discussing would be discussed in details okay this falls under the category of time series okay There's some of the other examples which i have given you comes under the category of regression techniques some other category comes under classification technique but before i uh, help you explain these things i need to tell you where exactly are these things coming with relation to data science okay so as and when you progress ahead i will we'll try to go through uh, the we will try to understand what is uh, machine learning what is artificial intelligence how it is related to data science okay will I, I i missed explaining this slide maybe this is something which you can uh, start from the next session okay. we'll also try to understand the data science life cycle. This is very important because this will give you a very high level overview of what are the things that you will have to, let's say, start doing whenever you are any particular, whenever you are in an environment related to data science. The steps that I'll be discussing over here, it may there may be a possibility that not all of these steps could be applied to all the scenarios, but this, you, this will give you a very uh, uh, this will give you some kind of framework that you will keep in your mind with the help of which you can definitely succeed okay there won't be any particular phase which you'll miss if you're applying these things so that's what we are going to uh, let's say continue in in our next session okay thanks for watching the video for full course please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today